Vanishing is a horror tabletop RPG that may or may not contain supernatural elements or simulations of real-world events that may or may not make listeners feel uncomfortable. Listener discretion is advanced. It is fall when you leave Uppsala on a coach heading south, and there is a terrible storm raging. Black clouds blanket the sky, with the wind howling and rain and hail pouring down, leaving you soaked to the skin. Lightning cracks across the sky and thunder makes the horses rear and whinny, but the coachman drives them on with his whip. The journey takes three and a half hours, and the storm grows increasingly violent as you progress. Through the coach window you see Lake Malar in the west, its foaming waves splashing against the shoreline. Traveling through a pine forest, you see tall trees being knocked to the ground by tempestuous winds or split by lightning strikes. In the flashes of lightning you see large rocks among the trees, moss-covered lumps staring back at you. Suddenly the witch Cadden appears at a T-junction, surrounded by woods, with Lake Malar to the north and west. It seems to be the only building around. The coachman is eager to drop you off and continue on his route south to Sigtuna. Halfway between the inn and the small community in the distance, you see a lonely church tower protruding from the trees. To add some context to that, you all are independent researchers, skeptics, whatever your chosen moniker of, of the supernatural, the occult, and the strange. Maybe it's medical fascination, maybe it's just a healthy level of superstition. You all would describe yourself as people that have maybe seen a thing or two that others swore was not real and have picked up a bit of a reputation for that. You all, earlier on the day, either were instructed to follow up on a note that was received or yourself received or mailed an invitation from one Olas Klimt to meet him at the Witch Cat Inn. You have never met Olas Klimt before. The Dance of Dreams. A shadow play of horror, murder, and revenge. Let yourself be enraptured and terrified by shadow theater with clockwork as amazing as that of the master's constructions on the continent. Watch as evil smiles, good people go to their doom, and spirits come to life. Follow Oscar Jort's encounter with the Black One, his struggle, and finally the betrayal which claimed his life. Hear the tunes of the enchanted flute that sends souls dancing to hell. The show will premiere shortly at the Witch Cat Inn. Not for the faint of heart. Meet me tonight at the Witch Cat Inn, Olas. All right, so as you three kind of look around as the carriage lurches along its path, Richard Steiner, what do you look like? So Richard Steiner is kind of like a little bit of an older gentleman. He has a very kind of close cropped hairstyle, a little bit of some stubble uh, just because it's been a long day and he hasn't had the chance to uh, shave or clean up or anything else like that. Otherwise, he is in a little bit of his going out suit. Um, he has a couple different ones for when he's operating in the room versus any kind of clinical visits or any kind of business outings. So this is something where it's a little bit more casual just because we are going to a shadow theater. This is not his normal carriage, so he's a little uncomfortable at the moment just because this is not something that he is used to. But otherwise... He is a little concerned about the status of the street just because he accidentally wore a little bit of his more polished shoes, so he doesn't want to mess those up. Poor choice of footwork given the conditions. Makes sense. Isabella, what do people see when they look at you? So uh, Isabella is uh, short of stature, but small frame, uh, but it's kind of... Uh, well, I say she's small of frame, but it kind of looks like she's more like medium of frame, but it's mostly because she's wrapped up in uh, a bunch of like cloaks and cloths, you know, uh, for somebody who gets like especially cold often. So she's bundled up. She has dark brown hair uh, that's long and looks like it's occasionally combed, but mostly or rather brushed, but mostly kept uh, just hanging loose. So it's kind of natty. Um, 
and looks a little unneat. Uh, she's got light blue eyes. She has some scars on her face that indicate that she may have had a harsh life for as young as she is. Uh, but I think probably the most notable thing is that she's looking at the nice clothes of the good doctor and kind of like sizing up his worth. Maybe not with malicious intent, but very clearly taking note of his valuables. An appraiser's glance, one could say. Yes, uh, and I will say anyone who's particularly perceptive uh, might be able to see the glint of the uh, the handle of a revolver sticking out around her, her belt. Interesting. And last but not least, Odell Matheson? Yes. Uh, so Odell Matheson is uh, middle-aged, not exactly like old, but like a little bit more seasoned. You get a little salt and pepper in the uh, in the hair and beard, if you will. Mustache beard. Um, he is in fairly good shape being, you know, middle class. So he's got, you know, resources and can have a kind of good diet and take care of himself and things like that. So he, he he's doing well for himself and it shows. That being said, though, he, he's got very kind of calm and kind of a welcoming uh like I guess stance as he's sitting there, if you will, not very like aggressive, not trying to like size people up, just very calm and like almost like welcoming. If somebody wanted to say something, he would actively engage them um, in that sense. But yes, very just kind of uh calm demeanor. Mm. So yeah, but just kind of wondering where we're going and whatnot. Well, you know, you're going, you're going to the yeah, well, yeah, but just kind of looking forward to seeing where we're going. No, fair. Yeah, I get you. Yeah. So, and didn't have a ton of time beforehand, but you did all have a little bit of time to, in theory, either prepare for this adventure or kind of outing, do some research. They wouldn't put any kind of special time into, I guess, researching the note, the uh, kind of stuff mentioned inside of it, like any preparation for this. You all are, after all, either investigators by hobby or trade of some kind or here on directive of some type. I would say as someone who's very much into the knowledge and learning side of things that I would have put some extra effort into uh, looking into this prior. So what you've looked into this is the kind of advantage mechanic. Um, so you basically kind of, you can research one thing you've known about. You could research um, Olas, you could research the witch cat in, you could research this um, strange thing mentioned about uh, shadow plays or shadow theater. I would have gone into searching about shadow theater and see if that's like i'm sure there's something in some book somewhere that i would have found some mention of just shadow uh shadow play if you will or yeah so i would have done that uh would you like me to roll anything specific to kind of see if i fit anything or you would know in kind of the limited research you were capable of doing into this that Shadow theory originated in India and China, where it was practiced several centuries before Christ or the Common Era, as many of us know it. It typically uses cut-out paper figures that are held up to a light source of some kind, which creates shadows on a cloth screen. A skilled puppeteer then manipulates the puppets and the lights that the figures appear to be alive. The art form came to Italy in the 18th century, so it's relatively new-ish in your region of the world, so it hasn't really kind of taken off in a major way just yet. And it's continued to spread against Europe ever since the arrival. Artists in England and France have experimented with clockwork to create automated versions of shadow theater, kind of like things you could crank that would have a small play play out for you automatically. Okay. Did anyone else do any research or preparation? Isabella can't really read, but she would have had, uh, she would have looked into the black one maybe going to like local churches to see if any of the uh, the priests there have any information asking her quote unquote friend Anna if there are any books in their library that mention something like that. You're not finding much about the black one aside for it's kind of a generic term for evil or something else along those lines. Do you by chance bring up the name Oscar Short as part of that in conversation? Yeah, yeah. So in Uppsala, there used to be a thing called the Society that's gone into disarray after many years of vacancy in its headquarters and whatnot. And 
there's rumors about what might have fallen to ruin, but none of them kind of seem to have a lot of water. But you did kind of through looking around on that, find out there was a man named Oscar Short who lived in the late 18th century who was a member of the society, allegedly. He worked as a writer and spent some time in Paris studying under Francois Dominique Serfin, a famous artist who put on shadow plays for the court at Versailles and the Palace Royale. All right. I have that all written down on notes that I have a very hard time reading. Last but not least, Dr. Richard Steiner. Do you put any preparations into this? Do you prepare anything? Do any extra research? Absolutely not. I got tickets to a free show and I thought to myself, oh, this could be entertaining. I The only kind of preparations I had was looking at my wardrobe, trying to figure out what would seem to make sure that I didn't look overdressed. And I uh, waited for my ride. That sounds like you may have researched the witch cat in then if you're trying to avoid being overdressed. Does that sound accurate? That is correct. So the Witch Cat Inn is an inn at the crossroads north of Sigtuna. Up until the end of the 18th century, the inn was used as a gathering place for a variety of intellectuals, spiritualists, and other kind of academically inclined folk. And today the inn is run by a um, man named Sammy Harula. Can you say his last name again? Harula. H-A-R-J-U-L-A. So as the Witch Cat Inn draws closer, one especially deep lurch of the coach sends you all kind of, not sprawling, but kind of like into each other inside of this thing. And the coachman kind of even leans over his shoulder and goes, sorry about that one, folks. Uh, Between the weather and the roads, well, uh, (laughs) yeah, this type of thing works. No, I do not exactly understand what's happening now. Well, uh, it's uh, terrible weather outside, and these roads are not in prime condition, and you asked me to drive a horse to an inn in the middle of goddamn nowhere. That's what's happening, uh, Doc. So, uh, yeah, I suppose this is maybe a typical thing people find themselves highly experienced with, but uh, perhaps use your imagination. Uh, I take a look outside the, uh, I guess, the coach that we're in, and I'm guessing we're inside this, like, thing that's being... I guess, pulled by a horse, like an yes. actual with a roof. In it. Okay. So I kind of look outside and look at the weather a little bit and I go, Oh, uh, understandable. I mean, if the weather doesn't agree, the weather doesn't agree. While you don't remember, you're getting hit with like water and hail and sleet. It is absolutely terrible weather conditions outside. Okay. Yeah. So um, I do have my hand, my hand on my hat as I'm kind of just like feeling all the elements hit me and I go, well, yeah, this is definitely not good condition for the, uh, for these, this kind of transportation, uh, approximately how far are we, uh, if you can guesstimate? It kind of like looks at you, looks the 100 yards to the inn. And I'd answer that one. Uh, that's where we're going, unless uh, something's gone uh, absolutely terribly wrong. <laughs> Not sure why you all would want to travel on a day like today, but uh, here we are, I suppose. Oh, well, uh, I mean, I'm more than happy to walk. It's only 100 yards. Uh, or give or take. Um, no, no, yes. you paid for door-to-door service, and I will deliver door-to-door service. Uh, as per our agreement, also, you know, I got a turn eventually, and you can all can get out when that happens, but uh, uh, no, y'all my, aren't used to traveling by carriage all that much, are you? I mean, I've traveled here and there, but no, my good sir, I, I insist. It's all right. I'm more than happy to walk the rest of the way. You know, every once in a while, we all have to put in our effort and hoof it a bit, if you will. Any other reactions from inside, or are we good to pull up the witch cat? Isabel doesn't say anything. She, like, grabs, like, her cloak and kind of, like, pulls it tighter, trying to keep the cold out. Yeah, so you kind of half gracefully stop as fitting a skilled cab driver and half kind of slide in the muck and the mud and the wet dirt as you just kind of like as the horse fights to get a grip on the road and the force of the moving carriage kind of pushes it forward a little bit and with a juddering stop you find yourself standing outside of the infamous or so you've been told based on the fact you were asked to come here under slightly strange situation the witch cat inn the witch cat inn is located at a t-junction meaning 
you have just kind of come down a road, then there's a road going off to your right and your left at this point. Uh, the road leads west to a ferry camp, which during the day can be used to cross um, over to Tatuna Village. And the road to the south leads to Sigtuna. And there's a church that you can see off the distance between you and Sigtuna. Can you remind me what the year is or like the general year? So like early 19th century, right? Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, Industrial Revolution is happening. The Witch Cat in itself is made up of uh, wood and consists of a large main building, a stable, and a or the storage room off the side of it. Uh, there's a garden that you can kind of vaguely see out back that you saw kind of as you approach the inn itself. And despite kind of someone's obvious best efforts, the, the inn itself seems to be falling apart kind of in every way possible. In the overhang that kind of is above the doorway, you see several pots kind of collecting water as it comes through a kind of like ramshackle or kind of desperate repairs made to the roof. Someone is trying very hard and failing at this. It's also not helped by the fact that like you can see like even like little details like the garden and kind of like weeds are creeping up all over the place. Like someone is trying hard and just failing across the board at this. As you pull up, the coachman kind of gets out, drops the little ladder thing down so you can step out of the coach. Let's you off, probably tosses you your effects. It's not a long kind of trip, so you probably have like maybe a bag with you of some type. And there's a man outside smoking. Thank you. Think nothing of it. Then gets back up on the carriage and tears off into the night. Uh, because it's pouring down rain, uh, Isabel kind of like jogs towards the, the door at the end. Sure. Same. Uh, do you stop to interact with the man or just go inside? Uh, Isabel does. She goes straight, straight inside. I think I'm also going to follow suit and go ahead and straight inside. I will reach into my coat pocket and pull out my little flask, unscrew it, and I will kind of playfully cheers the man who is having a smoke outside. Uh, as I take a swig from there, I will recap, put it back in my coat pocket, and head inside the inn. Makes sense. Yes, yeah, so as you kind of push past the man into the inn, not bumping into my thing. He appears to be a 40-year-old man with a well-groomed beard, round glasses, and a pointy nose. His sharp eyes kind of track you as you go in, though. And, and as you enter, he kind of, like, stubs out his cigarette and after a couple seconds follows you inside. As you enter, you kind of enter into the main dining room and or the main floor of the inn. It's mostly a dining room and a set of stairs up to a higher level, there's also a kitchen off to your left as you enter, and what you would guess looks to be a storage closet sticking off of that. There's a bar that stands between you and the kitchen off to your left, and then the rest of it's kind of just a large dining area with tears and tables and a roaring fire to get warm by. You can see three guests kind of milling about, sitting at tables, enjoying the atmosphere and food. One of them appears to be a priest of some kind, you can't quite tell. They're all at separate tables. To your left, as you enter at the bar, there's a uh, kind of a husky gentleman with a beard, and he welcomes you with open arms, kind of excitedly to the inn. Welcome to the Witch Cat Inn. Food, drink, lodgings? Yes. To all of the above, or something more selective? It depends on how expensive things are. Oh, there's plenty of time for talk later on, I suppose. Uh, kind of slides a mug of ale across the bar at you. My name is Samuel Harjula, the owner of this fine establishment, but please call me Sammy. The weather is truly terrible outside. Please, you must be soaked to the bone. The first round is on me. Warm your aching bones after that travel. I, for myself, was never a fan of coach travel. Far too bumpy. Made me nauseous, but my, I promise my ale will cure any of your traveling ailments. Thank you. Uh, I'll, I'll start drinking it, and I'll ask... Um... You have soup, food, something warm. We have many things. We have a fine rabbit stew in the pot right now. We have a selection of potatoes and other tubers that were dug just this morning by my lovely daughter. Would you care for a selection of the two? We also have bread and some other normal things, but the stew really is quite exceptional. How much is the stew? Please, please, please. We'll talk about that later. You intend to stay the night? Yes. And the food is part of the bill. We provide a meal with every stay. I see. Very well, yes. Some stew and potatoes, please. 
You see him yell over his shoulder to the kitchen. What are the special? And you, your two companions. Ale, stew, something fancier? I, I, I will take a, a special as well. Um, beer is fine. Uh, rabbit stew and some potatoes sounds delicious, actually. Excellent. And you, my... If you were to pick one attribute about your character, Jad, what would it be that kind of like some bartender would pick out from your character? It's like visual appearance. I would ex- I would say Rick Steiner looks a little severe. Like he's just a very sharp individual in the term, in the way that he dresses. But at the same time, just kind of you look at him and that man just looks pointy in spirit. And you, my new pointy guest, will you also be having the special? Um, no, I've already eaten for the night, or at least I'm, I'm good right now. Uh, do you mind if I could receive, I would say, some tea bitters if you have it, and then something, what are your imports by chance? Imports? Bad spirits. We have a fine selection of spirits. Anything of particular appeal? We have whiskeys from Ireland, we have, uh scotches from scotland we have various beers we have brandy if that's of your type there might be some port down in the basement i suppose as well but no one really asks for that much actually uh, a warm brandy sounds good to me holmes two specials and something to warm a brandy in and you're kind of a loud kind of just retort from the back and a red-haired man sticks his head out through kind of like a little service window yeah, yeah, I'll get a pot on the stove for you, boss. Looks at you. Oh, shit, new guests. I was expecting one new tonight after all the weather got bad. Welcome. I slinks back. Please uh, pardon the behavior of my cook. He is an excitable man. What an excellent cook. Gestures at the tables. If you'll take a seat, we'll have your food and drink out to you momentarily. I'll go pick a seat. Take your beer over, I assume? Yeah, close to the fire. Same. Is are we at a uh, bar? Is there like a bar seat? It's more kind of like a series of tables, I guess. But if you want to be at the bar, you can. It's a small bar right by the door, so it's not really a lot of space to. Mm, I see. I see. I see. I will take an empty table. Are you all together? Or are you all separate? Richard uh, moves to sit alone. All right. I am going to join Isabella. What? Um... What did you say your name was? Oh, my apologies. Uh, Odell. Isabella, nice to meet you. Pleasure to meet you as well. So upon you two saying that, the man from outside who um, was smoking kind of comes over to your table and pulls a chair over and sits down next to you. Ah, I I see you made it. I wasn't quite sure, given the whole weather of things, that uh, you would. You owe us? Have like smirks this. You have a sharp eye. Indeed, I am. Kind of like raises his hat and kind of like mock reading in the front a little bit. Olas Clint, private investigator and spiritualist or something like that. Okay. As a fellow Thursday's child, uh, welcome to the Witch Cat Inn. Thank you. What does that mean? Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, You'd be familiar with the phrase. You might not be. Um, I have like tapped one of his eyes. You have a sharp eye of sorts, one might say. You've uh, seen the occasional thing that um, others have not. Oh, yes. An industry term, I suppose. Yes, uh, a Thursday's child. A, uh, one gifted with the uh, sight to see the uh, less seen, if you will. Interesting. The rich guy over there was with us. I don't know if he was here to see you as well. Yes, I suspect that's the good doctor, and once he gets over himself, I suspect his curiosity will get the best of him, and he'll come on over and join the conversation, but... Will you be covering our tabs for the night? I suppose I can. I am the one that, after all, invited you to this, and between you and me, he could be charging a lot more for his rooms and whatnot. Great. Uh, Well, I guess small talk until the good doctor is... Well, if he's going to insist on being antisocial, no need to wait for him. I'm sure you have questions of some kind. Uh, I wanted to 
kind of chime in after kind of hearing or overhearing uh, Thursday's child. His ears kind of perk up and he does look at kind of over your way and is a little staring a little bit. Trying to hone in on what you two are or what y'all are having a conversation about. Can I notice that he's like trying to eavesdrop and just kind of like signal it's all right. You can join us kind of thing. I guess how not subtle are you being about it, uh, Richard? He's not really a subtle person. He does fine craft with his uh, hands, not so much his demeanor. <laughs> yeah. I, give me an observation, Odell, at... I'll give you a plus two on that one easily. All right. And you said plus two dice, it yep. looks like? Yeah, yeah, okay. Plus two. I get one success. All right, so that's enough to notice the doctor is not so subtly eavesdropping on you unless you want to try and play it off some way, doctor. Uh, So I'll kind of like notice it's not so subtle and go, you can join us, my friend. He realizes that he was just being a little rude, kind of sits up in a little bit of astonishment, coughs into his hand. Um, He'll pick up his drink and make his way over to the table. I'm very sorry. I did overhear uh, you all speaking about Thursday's children, um, which uh, caught my attention. Uh, My name is Richard. Apologies. Um, Welcome, Richard. I am Odell. This is Isabella. And I'm getting sorry, good sir, your name is. And I point to the other gentleman who was outside who joined us. Olas Clint. Private investigator and spiritualist. Ah, yes. Olas. We were just uh, chatting, but yes, no, no need to be further away. We can sit here at the same table. Makes it easier. No need to project our voices, if you will. Ah, you're the Mr. Olas Clint. I do believe we interacted briefly before coming inside. I do hope that you don't mind I have my own personal libations with me. He shrugs at this. Well then, please don't let me, uh, I've interrupted enough. Please continue your conversation. All right, everyone give me an observation. I got zero successes on mine. I got one success. Richard is uh, one success. All right, so Odell, maybe you're just kind of taking it all in at this point, but Isabella and Richard, you both realize that like, kind of underneath all of Olas's bluster there's a bit of fear going on. Like he's nervously tapping his fingers. Like despite his kind of warm demeanor, there is a kind of constant looking around the room with his eyes. Is everything okay? I'm not sure. He kind of like turns in his chair slightly. Isn't there something strange about this in to you? I'll look around and see if anything seems off. I was also, upon hearing that, going to go ahead and try and uh, see if I can notice anything. Are we talking about its state of disrepair? Yes, but a little bit beyond that. So as you're kind of looking around, the disrepair outside is also mirrored inside, like despite the warmth and again, the very obvious care taken to kind of maintaining and sprucing and improving the inn. There are several pots around collecting waters, at least through the roof. Like you can see kind of weird, like almost misfortune spots throughout the inn. And everyone seems to be kind of like actively ignoring or bypassing or refusing to acknowledge this. And there's also kind of like a, now that you're paying more attention to it, there's kind of almost like a tension in the air of sorts. Nothing too strange, but there's definitely something there. You don't have the context or even like the idea of how to place that just yet. Turns back around. You can feel it too. There's like something off about the place, right? Yes. How long have you been here? Not long. I I heard about the uh, play, which again kind of looks around. I don't exactly see a stage here either. And I've been doing some minor investigating. I heard that you were of a fellow persuasion to my um, hobby of sorts and reached out and thought this might be a good time to join forces. Safety in numbers and whatnot. We've all experienced like weird stuff before. Yeah. 
I mean, like also because you are Thursday's children slash have the site, like you've seen some stuff, maybe not like stuff stuff, but like you are aware there is a supernatural, at least undercurrent to the world type of thing. Maybe you can't like describe it as such, but all of you have seen something that kind of awoken your sight or kind of like forced you to acknowledge the site type of thing. Hmm. From where we're positioned, can we kind of see back into the kitchen where he was shouting? Yeah, a little bit. I got opera glasses that let me use vigilance at a distance. Can I see if it looks kind of in disrepair back there as well? Yeah, I'll even give you that to you. Like, it's the kind of same story across the entire space. There are signs of someone obviously trying to fix this place with all their heart and just kind of something working against them. The people you've spoken to, have they been normal shrugs normal enough for a drunk and a priest and kind of looks around a chemist what is a chemist you know makes medicine and whatnot oh uh yeah you speak of chemists as if they're something that is foul in your mouth do you have a personal history with that profession Kind of shakes his head in the direction of one of the guests, a woman who's kind of, there's a look on her face of, let's call it kind of vacancy almost, like she's kind of trailing her fingers through the air slightly in a flowing gesture. I have nothing in theory against the trade, but I have noticed that some of its practitioners tend to indulge in their own product. Well, as a surgeon, I do have to stand up for some of my colleagues in the field. While, yes, there can be times where some of our practices are do blend into the gray area, we can at least say that their product is tested. He shrugs at this. I suppose that's a polite way of describing an opium addict, a uh, sampler of trade. When he says kind of opium addict, uh, there is a slight frown that that Richard kind of gives off. A little, it's a little minuscule, but he is bristled by. It. Well, uh, we were promised a stage, or we were promised a production. Are you in charge of this, or is this something that we're all meeting up at? No, that's just it. I heard about the play. I saw some flyers for it. Perhaps you saw them around Uppsala. And when I arrived here, I could not locate the play. Having researched like shadow plays and things like that prior, Mm -hmm. can I do kind of a look around the room to see if there's any like, I guess anything that would be like a assembly or like how am I trying to phrase this? See if there's anything that looked like that could, could be assembled to create a shadow play stage of sorts. I mean, yeah, like you could use a table for it or something like that, but also like looking around. This wouldn't be an ideal space for it, but also like nothing's stopping it. Like the beauty of the shadow plays is that you can kind of do them wherever. Like as long as you have a sheet and a light source and the puppets, it's doable. You're not seeing any obvious signs of that. Okay. But also you've been here for like maybe 10, 15 minutes and you're waiting on food at this point. And yeah, like that. Nothing's stopping it from being a thing, but you're not seeing any obvious signs of it being a thing either. You're not seeing any advertisements for it, though, either, I might point out. Okay, so then, yeah, that, so that's also something. It's just like, for all intents and purposes, for a place that's advertising a shadow play on the outside, based off the invitation we got, now that we're here, there's nothing that really indicates that there's an actual, like, ongoing kind of play, like shadow yes. play type thing going on. If anything, it just looks looks like a just run down, you know, uh, yeah. bar in thing, if you will. Yeah. Okay. So I'm going to kind of do a glance around the room very casually and I go, well, I will say for a place that's advertising or says they're advertising a shadow play, it sure does look rather void of anything theatrical, if you will. And I start like pointing at the walls kind of casually and I go. There's not even a simple flyer or anything. In fact, it's quite devoid of all that. 
Well, from what I understand of Shadow Plays, it doesn't exactly need to have a stage other than having a light source. Maybe it has to do with the braziers and hearths over there. Maybe it's being projected on an opposite wall. If this is true, we could assemble something quickly, but you would think for a place of business that's advertising a play, you would see one flyer, perhaps some sort of advertisements along the walls. But have you seen a single advertisement since you've walked into this establishment? No, in all honesty, it seems as if the owner is ignorant to the production as well. Let Give me a second. I will, I'll, I'll speak to the gentleman that served us our food and drink. I get up and I walk to the bar. Has the food come already or we just have the drinks at the moment? You just have the drinks for now. Okay. Do you want to have to talk to Sammy? Yeah. Is- yep. Uh, hello there. Um, by chance, do you know the start time of tonight's entertainment? Tonight's what? Tonight's entertainment. We, I received a letter notifying me of a shadow play that is happening tonight at this establishment. You are the innkeeper, correct? Yes. You said a play yes something about a shadow theater um with clockwork takes kind of a deep breath in slowly lets it out just kind of angrily through his nose sophia he bellows kind of up the stairs to the second story and you hear kind of a sound of something knocking something over and then some footsteps descend and a a slightly taller and heavier set woman with brown hair descends she is not quite not a teenager, but kind of at the tail end of being a teenager. She has almond shaped brown eyes and kind of a whispery demeanor to her, despite her slightly larger than average size. She kind of like slinks almost scared like into kind of down the stairs into her father's view. Sophia, please join me in the kitchen. Apparently, there's a play going on under my roof. And she and what you do assume based on that interaction, her father step back into the kitchen and you hear the sounds of arguing and bickering. And while this is all going on, a thin and tall man kind of takes some food over to your table and puts it down. And as he's coming back, he goes, you might want to sit down. It's uh, going to be a while when this happens. Oh, I did not mean to cause trouble. Mm-hmm. And I just kind of sit down as well this the notes the notes that we received telling us about these plays these kind of came in as a letter correct yeah all right cool and i sit down well it seems as if the owner did not even know about any kind of play which is a little disappointing because the way that the letter that i received described the encounter of Oscar Hort with a black one sounded very intriguing. So from kind of one of the tables that a little bit kind of a ways away, one of the guests, a um, man dressed as a bit of a farmer, kind of like pushes himself up and goes, ain't no dark one or black one around here, I suppose, but uh, yeah, there's the occasional weird thing that happens around here, I suppose. What do you mean by that? Walks over, extend, sorry, extends a hand. Jonathan, friend of Sammy and uh, frequent uh, patron here at the Witch Cat. Dr. Richard, good to meet you. A pleasure. Uh, you know, the occasional moved object, cold spot, uh, people thinking they see a ghost every once in a while, but no real proof of that. Uh, you know, the normal countryside, strange sounds and whatnot. Uh, Sammy's uh, old, old lady, uh, Nora, thought the damn place was cursed, but uh, she could never prove it. Cursed, you say? I don't know, kind of like gestures around. It does look a tad cursed in here, if you ask me. Cursed is a bit of a heavy word, but at the same time, I do understand what you can mean with it, especially if there's been just a string of bad luck. I would imagine the state of disrepair is from this curse. Now that was Nora's theory, I think, or something along those lines. And it's not a string of bad luck. It's been a uh, ongoing 
thing since at least since Sammy took over, if not longer. And how long ago was that? Oh, the damn man's been in his family for generations. He inherited it from his father. His father inherited it from, from someone else farther down the line. Uh, I don't get Sammy talking about that, though. He'll uh, tell you how it's his uh, family duty to man the witch cat, and provide a place for traveler, for weary travelers to rest and whatnot. Quick question. Am I within earshot of this conversation? Hey, he's not being subtle at all. Yeah. Okay. Okay. He cool. is drunk and slurring and kind of saying stuff loud. You want to chime with anything or no? Nah? Well, yeah, I guess so. I'm kind of listening intently. So I'm going to kind of get up and, and walk over. Then I, I go. So cursed is when's the last time there's some sort of occurrence that happened here or anything that you would consider a, quote unquote cursed. So right as you ask that you hear a just loud crack thump sound from the kitchen. And Sophia goes wailing out of the kitchen, runs upstairs, kind of clutching the side of her face. And Sammy steps out looking angry and befuddled and kind of like angry scans his eyes around the dining room and kind of your new friend, Jonathan, looks from Sammy back to you and goes, well, aside from that, it's been a little while, I suppose, but uh, I wouldn't say that type of thing doesn't happen too unfrequently around here. When you say too infrequently, do you mean to her or just in general here at the Witch Cat? Sammy starts just murder glaring at Jonathan, and Jonathan kind of like shakily picks up his beer, drinks it, and puts it down and goes, I've probably said too much and kind of like starts the process sitting back down hmm well I've seemed to have lost my very light appetite I think I'm going to return my drink back to the bar I would like to well I'm going to go quickly over to Sammy because since I, I mean I am a psychologist but i do have a medical background so i'd like to go check and see if she's okay i know sammy was murder glaring me but sophia's the one that got hit yeah i know but i'm gonna ask sammy if it's okay for me to go upstairs to go see sophia i don't want to just run up there because it is his place of establishment oh sure yeah sammy pardon me um i understand i mean i heard a noise and i did see sophia running out and holding what seemed to be her face um I have a little bit of a medical background. Do you mind if I go take a look and make sure Sophia's okay? Fine. Go inspect the ungrateful brat. Upon hearing that, I'm going to go ahead and work my way up to Sophia. What do you other two do? I guess I'll go talk to some of the people. See what's... If they have any insights to uh, what's been going on. I think I'm going to have a conversation with Sammy. Or I'm going to continue my conversation with Sammy. I'll go. I guess the priest is the one I'll approach. All right. Isabella, what's your approach on this one? Is he sat with someone else or is he sat alone? He is sitting alone. He's not one of the tables. He is working hard as best you can kind of observe at a quick glance to ignore the situation some. As you approach, give me an observation, though observation or a medicine if that's higher by any chance they are the same let me see if i have anything that would help me this i don't think so okay observation whoa uh, out of four dice i have two successes excellent so the priest is a stern serious looking man he's got kind of sharp facial features but like as you get closer and kind of things get a little more detailed as you kind of approach the sharpness is definitely due to some illness or something like that. He is not in good health. He has that kind of sharp, angular physique, not because he's lucky to have that physique, but because kind of he is not wasting away, but kind of going gaunt like that. You know, what I'm talking about kind of when people like have like that stretched skin look almost because of like malnutrition and disease eating away at them kind of thing. Yeah. He's definitely got that going on as you approach. He kind of like raises his eyes and nods at you. You approach more or no? Uh, before I do, I'll, I'll ask. Do you mind if I join you, Father? Not at all, my child. 
tell me, what brings you to the Witch Cat Inn tonight? The stuff that we see as a Thursday's children, right? Or Thursday yeah. child. Is that like a known quantity among people or is it all hush hush? The answer that's kind of complicated. Telling someone about it's likely to get the reaction of you're crazy to you're possessed to oh stop making shit up depending on the person. I, it kind of comes down to how crazed you probably seem about that topic versus not and kind of how absolute in your belief like most people don't have the sight you are seeing things that most people never see in their entire lives type of thing you would also know that this is definitely during an era in which in the nordic countries the church was pushing real hard to kind of eradicates the wrong phrase but also eradicates pretty close to the right phrase to describe how they were going about dealing with all this stuff, if that makes any sense. I got you. It'd definitely be frowned upon by someone of a religious background, probably, and or looked at at a minimum as like paganism or something. But also, people have these beliefs and backgrounds and stuff like that. Like, depending what you look like, it might be kind of like, oh, fucking farmer folk superstitions. Bah. I was sent by my lord. He's fascinated by, um, well, I'll just say strange things. He had an invitation to uh, a play. He sent me in his stead. Called the Dance of Dreams. It was supposed to be hosted here. But it seems that's not the case. Well, there is no frivolity like that under this roof, my child. It is a stern place of good Christian belief. Isabella will do like uh, I forget what it's called when you do like crossing your chest thing, but she's not sincere about it. She's just kind of trying to ingratiate herself with the the priest. Tell me, my daughter, do you enjoy such frivolities as the theater? Not personally, no. Good, good. The you know, distractions from the true work of the Lord. Yes. But I have to have, uh, I must do my job. It is how I put food on the table. Of course, we all must do our jobs. But also, there is one job we must all be doing. And what is that? The Lord's work, my child. Of course. Is that what brings you here? It seems rather remote. I am but a traveler. It was either continue being wet and miserable on the road and make it all the way back to my church in Bilby, or stay here. I chose to take the Lord's blessing and make shelter in this inn. Where are you coming from? Ah, past the river. I came through Fortuna. Uh, do I know anything about Fortuna? It's up the road type of thing. Huh. I see. Well, it seems that I'm in luck and there's no play to attend. I'll just make casual conversation with See if uh, he lets slip anything weird he's seen around here. No, sure. Yeah. Okay. So, how are you going about doing this? You kind of you try to like manipulate him to saying something weird. You're just trying to like, yeah, learn from him. All right, cool. I, I'm specifically like playing up the fact that I'm religious. I'm not, and and seeing how I can, or what information I can get from that. Yeah, give me manipulation at plus one because you've kind of. Gotten in good a little bit. Manipulation plus one. Two successes out of seven dice. Yeah, this is going well. He's talking to you. He does share the occasional story about how there are rumors about the Witch Cat Inn being haunted and kind of how it's all just silly local superstition. And if he were to meet such a ghost, he would banish it with the Lord's might and whatnot. And yeah, just kind of idle, boastful, but also kind of very fundamentalist kind of priest bragging if you will i got you jumping over to the good doctor i see you're approaching sammy what are you what are you doing i guess like you come you're going over to talk you're going over to kind of confront him for hitting his kid we're rewinding time a little bit so this is all happening simultaneously what's the uh what's the game plan so i am going to confront sammy uh for Feeling a little 
what's the word I'm looking for? Bamboozled by my time, just because I do have, I'm, I'm a very busy man. But I'm using that as a cover to kind of really get get to the concept of why would he like how he lost his temper and uh, hit his kid. Sure. All right. So you're approaching Sammy. Do you have anything special with your approach? Just kind of walk over. Do you order a drink? Like, what's your move in the situation? I'm walking over and I have my empty glass with me or empty cup with me. I'm just going to place it down on the table. Now, Sammy. I'm a little confused now, just because this is something that I was sent a physical invitation to, and I pulled that out to show him. So I just need some clarification. If you are the person in charge here, please, I, I just need to know that I did not waste my time in coming out. You definitely wasted your time coming out for this. There is no play happening here. I would not allow such a waste of time to occur on the premises. Is that the source of your outburst there? I understand that you did take that into a private room, but nonetheless, the effects, the consequences of your actions was a little palpable. Is this your regular behavior? If you don't like it, you can leave. Okay. Do I come to your home and question how you run a business? Do I go sticking my nose into your family business? Do I question how you raise your daughter? Honestly, I would, just because that is exactly how I was raised and how we were conditioned in our regard. It's how we moved up in the lot. So, Sammy, I do believe that this is something that you could work on. And there is actually a doctor, it seems for this specific situation that you should probably talk to. He's currently talking to your daughter, but nonetheless, for the time being, it seems as if I am unfortunately unable to vacate, but I will take another drink if my coin is still good. All right, so you're going to kind of put your mug down on the table or on the bar, I guess? Yes. Give me an agility. Ooh, there's like no agility for me, but let's find out. Um, that is no successes on that agility roll. So Sammy kind of, as you put the cup down, just kind of grabs your hand, puts all of his weight just on your wrist, kind of pinning you a little bit to the bar, kind of pulls you into a bit of an awkward situation. You kind of slide forward some, and it's real close to your face. I think it's time you left my establishment. Doctor, was it? Dr. Steiner. I will have you on hand me, please. I can leave all on my own. And I go to kind of shake his hand off. Give me a physique to see if you can kind of like shake him off. It's like a really non-committal shake. Like one of those. Fair enough. He's putting his force on you, I guess, that kind of thing. Like he's definitely trying to like pin you a little bit while this is going on. Sammy, for what it is worth, I do understand that I did overstep some of my own bounds here. Not as a professional, but just as, yes, a guest to a undone play or anything else like that. But nonetheless, gentlemen to gentlemen, I do ask that you reconsider some of the ways that you handle some things. Now, we don't need anybody exploding or anything else like that, but a calm head will lead us into a good future. And I shake my hand again. It's like a little not non-committal. I'm not trying to be yeah. fort or not trying to be confrontational or anything else like that. Not physically confrontational, at least. Give me manipulation. That is one success out of six die. So kind of like he puts all his weight on your wrist again, kind of like putting some force on something, kind of uses it to push off and like releases your hand and kind of like backs away and turns away from the bar and you and goes, it's terrible weather outside. I'd hate for you to catch a cold after all this. It'd be a bad name for the inn. Just get out of my sight. Oh, well, I will do you that favor, and I will. And I just head upstairs uh, to follow up with his daughter as well as Odell. All right. So we're now going to jump to Odell. Odell, as kind of your two compatriots are peeling off to go talk to people on the bottom floor, you are following Sophia up the stairs, correct? Uh, Yeah. As you walk up the stairs, you do not see her. What you do see is a trap door in the ceiling, a pretty normal thing, like not a 
special trap door, just kind of an like a attic access door or something like that, is open and there's a ladder leading up to it or down from it that's been deployed. Do you go up? I mean, if there's no other signs of any other doors or areas like being entered, then yeah, I will go ahead and move up. Yep, that's definitely the obvious one. So as you exit up through the trap door, you find yourself in the attic of the Witch Cat Inn. And at first glance, it's just kind of full of trunks, boxes, books, old clothes, just stuff in storage. But then on the opposite side of the attic from you, kind of oh, as far away from the trap door as possible, there is a curtain. It doesn't quite divide the space in half, but definitely kind of hides something behind it. And Sophia is kind of sitting on top of a box next to the curtain, crying a little bit to herself. I'm assuming you're not being stealthy. You're just kind of going upstairs. Yeah, I'm just kind of like going upstairs. Yeah, so Sophia's sitting on a box and she kind of like turns her head as you come up through the floor. I'm sorry. I would prefer to be alone right now. Apologies. I just wanted to check and see if you're okay. I was in the, uh, at the bar when I saw you screamed and ran upstairs. So I just want to make sure you were, you were okay. Also, my apologies. My name is Dr. Odell Matheson. I believe your name is Sophia. She nods at this, kind of gives you a, a sad smile. Uh, yes, it, it, it is Sophia. Okay. Uh, well, Dr. Odell, what brings you to the, uh, the witch cat? Uh, well, funny story. Um, I was here because uh, uh, we were invited to uh, watch a play today. Um, but we can get to that to a moment. Are you okay? I just wanted to make sure you were okay. She shrugs. No, but if I said this wasn't normal, I would be lying. He's just so angry as of late. Hmm. Is this uncommon behavior for him? It kind of like makes a face and give me a manipulation. I rolled the manipulation with five dice and I got four successes. Kind of like through the face, she kind of just lets out a long sigh and goes, it started when my mother left. Um, about a year ago or so now, he got angrier and angrier since then. Hmm. Was there, I mean, I don't mean to pry and by all means, you can tell me to bug off if this is too much, but, um, did your mother pass or did she leave as in like she was done with him or some other reason? I, interesting you phrase it that way. Um, I suppose the correctest explanation would be uh, she ran away. There, there was a man. He was part of um, a traveling theater of some kind, I believe. Uh, she left with them when they came through. and. Yes, I, yes. Hmm. Funny you should say theater, because uh, that's actually why the reason my uh, cohorts and I are here tonight, we were invited for a uh, a theater production that was supposed to happen tonight, actually. But uh, just out of curiosity, when is the last time, uh, or do you hold productions often here, or? Oh, you you came to see my show. Oh, it's your show. Jumps up to her feet, kind of starts pushing some of the curtains away to reveal a surprisingly intricate stage. So it's a collection of curtains with several light sources that have been illuminated. You can kind of see various kind of puppets off to the sides and some mechanisms on tracks with gears. It's a very intricate setup from what you can see. And she goes, "Yes, I I, I built it myself. It's the uh, it's the Dance of Dreams." Oh, well. Well, yes, we received uh, invitations uh, to see this particular show this evening. Oh, excellent. Excellent. Would you like to see the show? I mean, it is a show for my for my friends and I, so I I wouldn't want to be the only one to enjoy it. But um, I'd rather not risk father knowing about the show. He has somehow not noticed any of the productions so far. Please take a seat. And she gestures at kind of some seats she has set up in the attic. I'll I'll start up for you immediately if you'd like. Let me gather my friends and then we can watch the show. Please, please. Uh, 
if you do that, father might find out about it. And I, I would be ever so distraught if you did something to the theater. Can I do some sort of like check or something to see if this is kind of just odd that all of a sudden she just wants to put a one person show on for me? Yeah, give me an observation. Okay. Six dice, zero successes. I mean, she's putting off a mix of excited someone wants to see the show and based on the behavior you've seen, she has every right to be afraid of her dad. Yeah, I just, my concern is like, I'm glad she's happy that like someone's here to watch the show, but like multiple people were here to watch the show, but it's just like, I I feel weird being the only one. Mm. Also, I'm in an attic alone with her. I feel weird. But hmm. you're the only one that's asked her, though, either. Like you came upstairs after she got hit. You've been, by all measures, kind to her so far. Maybe she thinks this is kind of her way of paying you back for some kindness. I don't know. Okay. What's there to be so suspicious of? (laughs) I don't like the way you said that. She starts eagerly kind of gesturing you towards some chairs. Please, please sit down. I can I can run the show as many times as you want tonight. It's quite easy to run. It's. All kind of actually indicates a crank on the side. It all runs off just the crank there. It's quite fun to run. So, I mean, I, I guess before we start, how have you been putting on this show without your father knowing? She shrugs. He's not exactly an observant man about what goes on upstairs. The last time he was up here was, I don't know, quite some time ago. He hasn't quite been the same since Mother left either. He chooses to focus on the inn and only the inn and she kind of like gestures up at the patchwork roof and stuff like that that's obviously got some signs of being patched from the outside as you can see he's had plenty to keep him busy all right well um let's uh we can sure let's go through the first act at least and then i wouldn't want my my friends to miss the show so um sure i'll uh and i'll i'll take a seat where uh She gestured for me to take a seat at. No. So you get some nice front row center seats for this. Not that there's any bad seats for this, really. But yeah, so you sit down. She starts lighting up a variety of lanterns and kind of the thing always seems to come alive some like where your switches get turned and kind of clicked on and kind of like she starts cranking this crank slowly and we hear the whir of clockwork mechanisms start to engage and then the puppet show begins as various kind of cloth puppets dance across the stage and reenact certain scenes and Sophia kind of narrates through all of this. So while kind of Sophia is cranking all of this, she is reciting this kind of story that narrates the events as they play out across backlit kind of silhouetted puppets that are dancing around in front of the various backdrops. She keeps kind of cycling through to tell the story. A young, a young man, man wanders, wanders through, through Europe, Europe, seeing things few people are fortunate enough to witness. He dances with queens and visits Versailles and the Palais Royal. Their people perform his plays and praise his name, and life dances along like a dream. But the people's revolution sweeps the land with grenades and fire, and those who were playing and singing end up dead by the side of the road. The young man flees the song of the guillotine. Our hero returns home to a city in the north. He walks through its gates without shoes, poor and mute. The house where he was born is burnt to ashes, and his family is missing. He kneels by the side of the road, begging for coin, and no one knows that his name was once sung in the palaces of Europe. Suddenly, he sees things no one else does. Creatures creeping, flying, and crawling as the invisibles reveal themselves to him. When he points them out to others, he is mocked and beaten. A man picks him up from the street and has him bathed and clothed. The man's name is Albert, and his mansion is a place of love and song. Our young hero performs his plays and sings to him for days and nights, and they eat fruit and drink wine. Albert introduces his friends. In the young man's dreams, they are all dancing together. But But the the dreams lie. lie. It It was was you. You brought me here. You asked me to sit down and talk. We spoke of the future of the world. I have the right to refuse. You said so and smiled, and then you butchered me like a pig. One hangs from the ceiling. 
you buried my body in unholy ground without priest or consecration. Now dreams are all I have left. I gaze out over the audience at the Polas Royale. I dance with the prisoners. I eat cake. I look up into your eyes, Albert, and I let you take my dirty hand. You summoned me to Pyre's Inn. You make me a villainous proposition and I decline. You cut me. I dream not wanting to die. At least you are back. Welcome. As the play goes on, slowly Sophia's voice goes from normal to something quite obviously not hers. Give me an observation. As I figured this was going to happen. Okay. Okay. Uh, Six dice, one success. So you notice that Sophia is staring the entire time through the play, not at you, but at a point about three or four feet off the ground, kind of back towards the entrance of the attic space. <sighs> Can I, uh, I'm, t- I'm assuming since I'm sitting center front there, it's behind me. What's behind you? Whatever she's staring at this point. Oh, yeah, she's definitely looking past you. She's looking past me, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Are her eyes just locked in, not shifting at all? Or are they, like, following whatever she's staring at behind her? Um, They're pretty locked in. They're pretty locked in? Okay. Do I sense that there's something else in the room? What else could possibly be in the room with you? Whatever she's locked in on. And there's only one way to find out. Uh, of course, let's go ahead and do a little turnaround and look. So, floating in the air, roughly where Sophia is staring, is a specter. And by specter, I mean the mostly decayed corpse of a man wearing dated but formal attire. The flesh has been stripped from his bones, revealing a skull. His hands are mostly clawed kind of skeletal fingers with the occasional patch of skin still on them. He stares intently at you. Jumping downstairs, Isabella, you're still talking to the priest, right? Yeah. So over the last like minute or so, as the priest has been talking at you and kind of going through all this, he started to yawn and Slowly but surely, he's kind of lowered himself into a sleeping position on the table. Looking around, you notice that everyone else down here, except for Sammy, has also kind of slowly slipped into sleep of some kind. Uh, Are any of my companions down here? No. Odell's all the way upstairs, and uh, Richard is on the second floor. I'll reach out and check the priest's pulse, or rather, just see if he's breathing. He's breathing still. He is very much alive, just kind of suddenly asleep. I'll stand up and walk to the bar. So Sammy's kind of standing there, but he's tense. And looking around with a wild look in his eyes as you approach. What what strange manner of dress do you wear, stranger? What? I get many travelers at my inn, but... I've never seen someone dressed as you do. So kind of like looks you up and down. So casual for a woman on the road. I like look down at my clothes. I'm wearing what I wore when I first stepped in. I must have missed you coming in. My apologies. My apologies. My mind is elsewhere, I suppose. Uh, What do you mean? We talked about the stew you have on in the back and the ale you gave me. She like holds up the mug. Kind of looks at the mug, confused. I don't remember buying this. Uh, looks around some. My 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 inn. What has happened to my inn? This must be a. This must be punishment. What do you mean? I'd I'd rather not speak of it. Uh, it's. I'm sorry. To, I'm sorry to bother you with my troubles. Well, um, you can't like start a story and then not finish it. That's just rude. It's inhospitable. Please, it it doesn't concern you. It was a long time ago. Well, everyone else is asleep, so you're the only person I have to talk to, so. Kind of like opens up a little, a little kind of door on the bar and steps out. 
help yourself to whatever's in the back, a stew, drink, whatever. I, I need to be alone and kind of starts walking towards the stairs to go upstairs. I, I kind of like let him go and then I'm going to follow him. All right. So give me an observation as you are kind of like down in the dining room. One success. You've noticed kind of like as his behavior's gotten stranger, every light down here has dimmed. It's suddenly gotten much colder, and you're not quite sure when it happened, but all of the flames are like barely putting off like lamps, the fireplace. They illuminate the space, but just barely, and they've taken on a kind of eerie blue color that's not normal for this. And it's, as I said, it's definitely colder all of a sudden. Isabel kind of like adjusts her furs again, I'm just kind of a naturally cold person, takes note of it. And then is going to try to stealthily follow our friend. All right. Yeah, he's following him. Jumping upstairs to Richard. Richard, the various lanterns on the wall, kind of lights have all dimmed. They've all like, they've also witnessed the get much colder. You've also heard a strange conversation from downstairs. And there appears to be a conversation happening upstairs. You can hear kind of vaguely the trap door. It has gotten darker, though, and colder where you're at. And there's kind of a blue tinge to everything that's touched by the light. I pause as I'm heading up the stairs. I squint a little, just uh, confused as what's going on. From there, I pull out my glasses as it's a little more difficult to see. And I also pull out my flask just because if some weird shit's about to go down, I'm going to just take a little sip just to get the edge off. But I will continue uh, upstairs as, or continue to go upstairs as uh, once I'm done with all that. So you do hear kind of steps coming up the stairs behind you, but also the conversation upstairs has definitely stopped too. It's an eerie silence upstairs though as well. I uh, pause to try to listen to see what's kind of going on. And it, everything is just silent at this point. Mm -hmm. uh, do I notice somebody kind of coming up behind me? I mean, you hear footsteps on the stairs. I hear footsteps on uh, footsteps on the stairs, but it's the ones that don't match mine. Or I guess I look behind me. All right. See if there's anyone else following me. Uh, following me up. All right. Jumping back upstairs to the top floor to Odell. There's a floating specter. It kind of stares deeply into your soul. Now time for our first fear check. So. Fear is kind of like Sandy in this game, except game have two different ways to approach it. You either can use empathy or you can use logic. Basically, you're kind of thinking your way through this or feeling your way through this. Which one are you going with? I want to go. Uh, let me start with logic on this one. You only get to choose one. There's no like secondary pick for this. OK, um, I'll go with logic. All right. See you logic. Uh, four dice, one success. That is not enough to pass. Oof. Ouch. Owie. All right. So give me a D six now. Uh, one. So you become terrified for a short while. How do you respond to this kind of sudden mental shift? Your options are to flee, to freeze, to faint, or to attack. I think the most obvious one is going to be to flee for me. So. I guess I'm going to try to like, since I did use logic on this one, I will do for what I seem logical and try to find a place to give myself more room and distance. So like try to run away. So from where I'm at, so they're directly over the trap door, I'm assuming, correct? More or less. Yeah. Yeah. So observing this, I can't dive for the trap door without basically getting close to them. So I want to put a little bit of distance between myself and this uh, specter or whatever it is. So you're going to kind of flee towards the stage, basically? Yeah, I'll head towards the stage a bit. All right. So as part of this, you do pick up a mental condition. Because of that, I'm going to say you pick up frightened. That's fair. All right. I have selected frightened. Yep. All right. So let's put this out in as one kind of thing. Isabella, you are coming up the stairs following Sam. He was kind of muttering about something under his breath. Richard, you hear 
from up above you and kind of behind you now someone kind of knock a chair over and then frantic kind of scrabbling or scrambling across the floor away from the trap door. It sounds like you'd guess a full size man kind of reacting poorly to something. Obviously Odell, you are overcome by the sight of a literal specter of some kind floating in the air, staring full dead eye at you as you kind of like hug a wall as best you can to get away from it. Odell, you're terrified for a little bit, so you're kind of out of action until that wears off. Um, Isabella, Richard, who wants to react first? Well, I mean, what do what do I see? So you see nothing. You kind of hear the same sound, but also it's a little bit kind of hard to hear it over the sound of Semi coming upstairs. You probably see Richard at this point just kind of standing there on the floor looking back at you, and Sammy's being weird still and kind of muttering to himself about the disrepair of the inn, and maybe he deserves this, yada, yada, yada. Like, it, it's a very different kind of sudden change of whatever you want to call it for Sammy as he kind of, he's not drunk per se, but there's kind of a weird swaying to him almost. He kind of, like, makes his way up the stairs. I'm going to keep following him. All right. Richard, you see Sammy coming up the stairs, followed by Isabella. Sammy's kind of slowly making his way towards you. He's not in any hurry or something like that, but he is kind of gently rocking and forth ever so slightly. You heard the strange sound upstairs, most definitely. What do you do? Sammy, are you... Sammy, are you okay? Hello, Sammy. Is he responding to me at all? He kind of like puts a hand and tries to push past you. I don't deserve to be okay. No, no, no. You can be... Look, I know that I had some brusque words for you but nonetheless it's one of those things where we all can work and strive to to better ourselves are you no you seem you seem to be acting a little strange and i touch the back of my hand to his forehead and i just kind of quick like follow or i'm as i'm following him up the stairs i'm also just kind of doing quick just like temp checks or making sure that he's he's fine Kind of pushes past you some. Albert, leave me alone. I wish to be alone. Albert, my name is Richard. Shut up, Albert. Who, who is Albert? So looking at the ground plan, you can kind of see that as you come up the stairs to the left is a room that you're not quite sure about. By the trap door, there's a room you can kind of guess is probably Sophia's. The rest is guest rooms. And he kind of makes his way to a door kind of you have to go out and around the stairs that appears to kind of be like maybe the main bedroom of the place or something. He kind of starts fumbling with some keys and opens up the door and kind of goes inside. And then you hear the sound of a loud lock inside of it. Can I try to slip in behind him? Yeah. Give me a, yeah, just slipping basically, right? Yeah. Slipping in. And give me a stealth to see if you can kind of like move in behind him. One success. Yes. Yeah, so you managed to kind of get in behind him. Are you trying to avoid detection or just trying to get in the room with him? Uh, avoid detection. All right. So, yeah, kind of he's absentmindedly, like, almost single-mindedly kind of like grabs a chair, slowly drags it to the center of the room, finds, like, uh, pulls the sheets off the bed, is kind of doing all this, like, barely notices you're there and kind of tosses the sheets up over the rafter, pulls it down, kind of balancing it wraps it around his neck, gets up on the chair, and then kicks the chair out from underneath him. Uh, <laughs> I'm going to start screaming for the doctor. Uh, doctor, <laughs> I need your help. Uh, and I'm going to go try and, like, you know, lift him and keep him from strangling himself. Or hanging himself, rather. Give me a force. Two successes. All right, so you're managing to kind of like hold Sammy up off the ground as he kind of like tries to kick you off a little bit, but you are managing to kind of hold him from the sheet going taut. Outside the room, Richard, you hear Isabella suddenly screaming for you. The door is locked. What do you do? After jiggling it, I'm going to imagine like I can confirm that it is locked. Uh, I will start ramming the door with my body. All right, give me a force. Damn, I wish I had my horse. <laughs> out of three dice uh one success all right so you kind of kick the door and it kind of it, maybe it's disrepair of the building maybe it's an old door maybe it's a bad lock you're not quite sure the door kind of like slams open and you see 
Isabella holding the heavy set kind of squat man of Sammy up in the air wriggling. He's obviously trying to hang himself. The chair has been kind of kicked across the room. What do you do? I will attempt to untie the sheets that are hanging from the rafters. Yeah. I mean, if Josh just cut the sheets. I'm going to cut the sheets. I didn't know I had an implement to cut the sheets. Yeah, you could probably find a knife in this room. It's a room after all. Mm, mm. Yeah, so um, give me a investigation. See if you can find something to cut the sheets with. Out of six die, one success. Yeah, you find like a chef knife or something that was brought up at one point. You can kind of successfully cut the sheets and Sammy falls all of his weight onto Isabella, but safe to the ground. And he kind of just starts sobbing on the ground there. Once he's like on the ground, I imagine Isabella goes down with him. Oh, yeah. She like gets onto her knees and slaps him and she says, what's the matter with you? Katya, please. It's it's too much. What we did was terrible. We shouldn't have done it. What are you? So she like looks at the doctor. He called me Albert earlier. I think he's going through some sort of psychosis. Can I do a medical investigation on him? See if there's anything kind of like out of the ordinary for for his vitals or anything else like that. Yeah. Ooh, cool, cool. How many times can I use my gear? Because I have my medical, I have like medical equipment, correct? Yeah. Um, just use it. Just use it. Out of eight dice, two successes. Yeah. So there's nothing physically wrong with Sammy, but kind of he's not like if you kind of like a finger falling test, he's not following. He's not focusing on you. He definitely has kind of like a drunk or kind of out of it almost quality to him. Like he's not really a hundred percent sure where he is. He's though he knows he's at the witch cat, but he's confused by the witch cat. And he definitely keeps calling you Richard and uh, Isabella Katya. And he keeps kind of saying, as you're doing this to just leave him alone and let him kind of do what he needs to, to, to make amends. Sammy, Sammy here. And I uh, pull my flask out. And I hand it to him. Drink this. It'll it'll help calm you down. Drink this. Drink this. Because inside the flask is a mixture of whiskey, morphia, and laudanum that I've just been sipping on. So kind of he like half pushes it away. You kind of half get it down his throat and he goes, Richard, I, I appreciate it. But what we've done is monstrous and wrong and we should be punished for it. And kind of like as you're kind of forcing this down, his throat, he kind of slowly just kind of drifts away and kind of his last words are, Oscar didn't deserve what we did to him. And then kind of falls asleep, unconscious. Well, I feel as if that would have been much more helpful had he been sober telling us these details. Isabella, do you know an Oscar? Uh, yes. Isn't Oscar the name in the letter? You're right. Is it? That's the that's the man who invited us. No, 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 no. That's the man who invited us. It was the 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 man who the play was about. Wait. Speaking of the play, did he like kill the main character of the play? That doesn't make any sense, right? No. It. So, I mean, I don't know if he exactly killed him. I mean. Uh, he did it. I know it does sound like he wronged Oscar, seeing as how Oscar apparently did not deserve anything like that. I mean, I don't necessarily disagree with you, but when you say like I deserve what I'm going to get for what we did to him or whatever, uh, I've only heard people talk about that when they're like super guilty about something. Yes, I I cannot disagree with you on that. But if he's he's safe for the time being, I need to make sure that I'm I'm going to put him in rescue position just so that way if he ends up vomiting, he doesn't he doesn't what's it called uh, drown in his own vomit. But we do need to check on Odell. It's been a minute since I last seen him. And if something is going on, then I want to make sure that at least the three of us, we know each other to a point. You you want to go see him, or do you want me to go see him? I don't think we should leave suicidal Sammy alone. I will be very honest with you. What I have in my flask is powerful enough to knock out a horse. 
I have a higher tolerance than most others to certain tinctures. So this will keep them down. Are you like, um, do you like self-medicate? I have prescriptions. I have prescriptions. Can you write prescription? I am a physician after all. Yes, I have prescriptions and I'm taking my prescribed medication. This is not a topic that we need to discuss at the moment. You're right. I'm sorry. You're right. You're right. You're right. Well, I don't want to look around before he wakes up, but we can go look for our friend if you if you think that's best. Well, if you want to look around here, I'll take a look outside then just to see where Odell went to. Okay, that works. And I step outside and I take a look around to see if I can find anything, any clue as to where Odell went. I mean, you see the trap door, but also give me a vigilance. I am a vigilant man. That is two successes out of six die. So from downstairs, you hear the sound of multiple chairs getting shakily, almost kind of drunkenly pushed away from tables and then knocked over. You hear the sound of some small tables being knocked over and kind of a mild shuffling of feet. I look down the stairs. Is anyone coming up? Not that you can see yet. I run back into Sammy's room. I'm looking around. I, I think some trouble is brewing downstairs. I make some kind of roll to see if I found anything. No need. Uh, the most uh, kind of the there's a variety of kind of small little keepsakes in the room, maybe a journal or two. Most importantly, though, Sammy has a key ring on him, though, with several keys on it. I'll take the key ring and the journal. All right. I can't read, but maybe you'll find this useful. I'll pass the journal to the doctor. You can't read? You know what? Never mind. That's a, that's a topic of conversation for later. I haven't seen Odell anywhere. I think the last place to look is through this trap door, but do I have enough time? To flip through the journal? That sure sounds like a question I'm not going to answer in a useful manner. My curiosity is too too intense. Going to like flip book the, through the journal just to see if I can find anything that catches my eye as I'm like paging through. Yeah, give me a learning. That is two successes out of seven die. All right, so this takes a couple minutes, but kind of you're frantically flipping through looking for important stuff, and you learn a couple things. Anora, Sammy's wife, as best you can tell from the pages, her departure was quite sudden, according to Sammy. He blames the arts, performers, all that stuff for tempting his wife away. He writes a lot about kind of his pride in the end. He's kind of baffled by the end falling apart, but also he talks at kind of great length, often going on a bit of a rant about how annoying his wife's fascination with the occult is and how she keeps trying to quote contact ghosts and whatnot in his inn and how stupid that would be. It's too good an inn. Like, why would there be ghosts here? It's his family inn. Nothing bad's ever happened in the family, et cetera, et cetera. Goes back generations. A couple mentions of how kind of excited he is to maybe pass the inn down to his daughter, Sophia. Also a couple kind of writings about how he's a little bit worried. She's being tempted by art like her mother was. He's a relatively simple and straightforward guy who finds progress and kind of mechanical and like the future fascinating, but also is keenly aware he runs an inn at some crossroads. And yeah, he has a definite disdain, though, for artists and creatives and them types. (laughs) But jumping upstairs to Odell. Uh, While he was reading the journal, I will have uh, made my way up to the hatch. All right. I'll jump to Adele first. All right. So you are cowering in the wall, basically, as you kind of try to get as far away from the skeleton as possible. And that's not going great for you. It's slowly kind of been just drifting your way ever so slowly. Okay. All right. So kind of slowly but surely, this revenant kind of floats across the room for you passes through a support beam, part of the set, et cetera, et cetera, and just kind of places its hand on your forehead. You can very much feel it, and you feel kind of it shove its way into your mind, and suddenly it's just gone. Like, everything's back to normal. Sophia's kind of just sitting there, 
The room is oddly dark. All the lanterns are kind of glowing a weird blue color. It's cold. And you feel a tad out of it. It's about at this time you're kind of regaining your consciousness that Isabella sticks her head up through kind of the trap door and is looking around. And you feel your body kind of start to walk towards the trap door. Isabella, you see a kind of little theater set up, the attic with kind of storage going on. You see Odell, who looks a tad shaken, but not like afraid or anything like that, just kind of slowly walking towards you across the room. Sophia's kind of sitting by a crank mechanism of some kind attached to the stage, just kind of sitting there. She's looking very tired, almost like she's about to pass out or something like that into kind of a deep slumber. What do you do? Is everything okay up here? Things are fine. (laughs) Nothing weird happened up here? Something weird happening downstairs. Nothing weird happened up here, Alex. Uh, <clears throat> nothing weird happened up here. I, I look past to the uh, Sophia and see if she's in agreement or if she's passed out at this point. She's kind of like halfway to sleep at this point, and Odell's kind of slowly moving towards you. They're two thirds of the way across the room, though. Uh, I mean, d- does he look like weird and like rigid or? Does his mannerism seem different at all? Give me an observation. I'm going to tell you right now, if I fail, that makes a lot of sense. Oh my god. Three successes out of four dice. There's definitely kind of a slight kind of wobble to him as he approaches. Alex, I need you to give me a force. A force? Oh, there it is. Okay, this is not going to go great, but let's see how it goes. Uh, three dice, one success. All right. So kind of suddenly Odell tries to kick out at you, Isabella, and says, die, catch ya. Uh, can I try to like catch his foot? Yep. Is it force check? Yep. You Is need it... me to say that, by the way? Or do no, you... no, you're not talking anymore. Okay. <laughs> Is this um considered unarmed combat? Yeah. I'd say so. I got 10 dice when I'm fighting unarmed. Uh, so, like, I'm, like, my head's sticking through, and he tries to, like, kick me in the head. And sort of, like, as a reaction, I move my head to the side and catch, like, his ankle. Uh, it's very clearly a different voice, right? Oh, yeah. it's the, the voice is now completely changed. I hop off the ladder while still holding on to the ankle. All right, give me an agility to see if you can do that. One success. To be clear, I'm not trying to get into the room. I'm trying to drop back down to the lower floor and drag uh, Odell with me. But you have the legs still, right? Yes. All right. So you kind of successfully do that. You pull them down, but they're kind of on you. And suddenly you kind of feel them kicking down at you as though they have no regard for their own life. And oh, good God. All right. You got any armor on you? Nope. So that slams you into the ground and kind of like as the boot comes down on you, just a shockwave of extreme cold explodes through your body. Like you feel your eyes kind of freeze up a little bit. You feel some tears come down your on the side of your face and you're going to take battered and wounded for physical conditions. Oh, there's no way to negate this either, huh? No. Okay, so this isn't a situation I can fight back in. I mean, I also got six successes. Oh. Okay. I don't know what either of those conditions mean, but I do know I basically can't heal them for the rest of the adventure. In those ways, but... Uh, When I was reading, it seemed like the only way to do it is over the course of a day. Yeah. Uh, Yes, that is true. There are ways, though. Isabella, you hit the ground and kind of Odell lands on you, but kind of pulling out of Odell's body is this specter, this floating skeleton in dated, formal, tattered wear, just kind of peels out of his body and kind of floats there midway up the ladder as you kind of get slammed down to the ground. Isabella, Richard, give me a fear check. So remember, that's you're dealing with empathy or logic as you try and not freak out on this one. So when I was reading, we get an extra die. Yes, if- there are three of you here, so you get to add 
plus two because you have two compatriots here. Your roll, bonus die, two. I'm not rolling because I'm not actively here. No, no. Oh, yeah. you, you've seen the skeleton already. Oh, okay. I'm trying to think if I should push this. What ha- how does pushing work in this game? So pushing means you're guaranteed to take a condition, but you're also already guaranteed to take a condition because you're, if you don't, you become terrified and you lose kind of agency of your character. You have to pick from one of the kind of terror, you have to flee, attack, whatever type of options, and we get to, and you have to do that for X amount of time. Pushing means you have a chance to re-roll as many dice as don't have sixes on it type of thing. And remember, just one success was not enough to pass this earlier. The reason to push this roll is that you're guaranteed to take at least two mental conditions. It's possible to beat this and take only one mental condition if you push this roll. I'm going to push my roll because I got zero successes out of seven die. And I got one success out of seven die, which let's see what happens to me. All right. So what condition are you taking? You got, are you getting angry at this situation? Do you still get scared but not terrified? Like, is there a hopelessness to this as this kind of ghost is apparently kicking your compatriots down the stairs at each other? Um, I'm getting angry at the situation just because I think I've imbibed a little too much. And I do not have my mental wherewithal fully cognizant uh, and in my control. I did dump the rest of my flask into Sammy. So there's also just kind of the annoyance that while I'm angry at myself for being a little too loopy, I could also use another sip. You're still going to want to take two from this because you only got one success. So let's give you angry and frightened, which makes sense. You will take the terrified condition, though, because you didn't quite manage to match the fear. Isabella, are you going to try and push on this so that you can kind of maybe maintain your wits or nah? So, okay, I guess uh, it depends on how we recover conditions. If it's once a day, then probably not. If there's a a quicker way, then maybe. Because I remember the one that I read was uh, getting medical care for a day can remove three conditions. You can recover one by kind of going somewhere to collect yourself. Mental and physical are a little bit different. Okay. Sure, I'll push it. It's fun that way. I got two successes. All right, so you managed to kind of shrug this off. Like, you only take one condition from this. Do you get angry, frightened, or hopeless? I get pissed off. All right. I just got stomped on. I got the wind knocked out of me. All right, so to paint the scene, Odell, you are kind of coming to on top of Isabella as though you've been, like, thrown at her or something like that. Isabella, you have had one of your compatriots thrown down a ladder at you. There's now a floating specter kind of halfway up the staircase looking down at you. Richard, you have seen a specter. It is freaking you the fuck out. Do you run? Do you attack it? How do you respond in this instance? Well, I'm getting... A little angry and a little hopeless. Uh, I would imagine that, you know, in a fight or flight, I would leave it up to the die. Odds I fight, uh, evens I run. All right. Can I roll a d6 on that? Yeah. That's an odd. I'm, I'm swinging. I'm swinging at a specter. Your attacks pass harmlessly through it. And it looks at you kind of a little bit baffled. Richard, your pathetic attempts can't hurt me anymore. And who is it that is addressing me? Don't you recognize me, Richard? It's your old friend, your companion, Oscar. Oscar? How the hell am I supposed to know an Oscar? That name keeps getting thrown around. All right, give me 1d6 to see how long you're kind of trying to attack the specter. That is a full-ass six. So you're just kind of going at it angrily, just kind of punching away, I'm assuming, at this kind of thing. Or what are you attacking with? I'd like to think that I'm doing really well at my boxing classes, but a lot of people are just kind of afraid of like what I would say, just because I do have a little bit of an ill temper, as uh, some people can surmise. I'm not great, but I, but I can swing. Not the best, though. You're basically boxing air. Like every single swing you 
wood connects passes harmlessly through the specter and it kind of like floats slowly around the room berating you some and kind of taunting you as you kind of swing at it limply kind of thing is just nothing connects odell isabella you are watching this what do you do he said his name was oscar right Mm -hmm. i'm gonna like get up and kind of hobble back a little and watch what's going on i'm kind of coming to considering i was uh not exactly myself a second ago sure so i'm kind of gathering my bearings but i did catch that he said his name is oscar and considering like i have a big focus on like learning and books and all stuff would i recognize that the name oscar is the same or maybe i'm confusing it but is it the same oscar from the invitation that we got the invitation you got is from Olas, but it did mention come see the play about Oscar. Yeah. Okay. Oscar Hewart. So there's an Oscar. Okay. So does, yeah, I remember there was an Oscar in the invitation. Okay. Uh, is Sophia still upstairs or is it just we're downstairs and Sophia's just knocked out upstairs? You have no idea what Sophia's up to, but she last was seen upstairs. Okay. So I guess I'm seeing this all kind of go down and I'm like in disbelief considering like the last thing I saw was that thing upstairs. And now it's the next thing I see down, and I'm a floor down. So uh, I get up trying to gather my bearings and seeing that physical attacks are harmless. Um, is this hallway l- well lit? Not anymore. Not anymore. Is there some sort of lamp or something nearby I can try to light? Yeah. I mean, it's okay. lit. It's just not glowing or kind of burning all that brightly. Okay. I am going to try to grab the lamp or grab a lamp, uh, light it, and then try to swing the light in the direction of it. All right. Give me a close combat. Okay. Uh, four dice, zero successes. It's kind of can't quite make contact. Richard's kind of in the way as it's trying to fight this ghost and just kind of laughs at you. I was going to ask. It even like turns to look at you while. While Rich is trying to punch it, it kind of turns to you and goes, Hilma, really? Okay. So at that point, then, um, is it back foot to focusing on Richard or is it focusing on me now? It's not really focusing on any of you. It's just kind of floating around, almost baiting Richard around the room and just kind of moves and floats and moves and floats for the time being. Okay. Can I try to climb back up to get to Sophia? Sure. Okay. So. My goal is to get back up to Sophia and try to wake her up and see if she knows anything more about this thing. Cause she clearly saw it and is aware of it. So maybe she has more information about it. All right. So we're going back upstairs. Yep. All right. Give me a joy to see how quickly you do this. Four dice, zero successes. It's not graceful, but you get there eventually. Isabella. You have seen Odell trying to attack this thing with a candle or kind of with a lantern. It didn't do anything. You're watching it just kind of lazily float around the room, just kind of baiting Richard to attack it. What do you do? What did it call Odell? It was... Hilma. It called uh, Richard... uh... Albert. They called me Katya. Yep. I don't know what the... what you are, but I'm not... Katya, I'm Isabella. I don't know who that is. What are you? Lies and trickery. Katya, lies and trickery. I suppose that I should expect from my murderers. Uh, I wasn't... I think, like, the being called a murderer gets, like, Isabella kind of lost in rambling and whatnot because of her dark secret so she's like trying to stumble over like I've never killed anyone and it turns into like I didn't kill you I, I and it just it kind of like lost in, in battling with the horrible horrifying situation the specter kind of cackles at you what's the matter Katya can't decide which lie to go with no I haven't I've never met you I don't know who you are. You're just in some play. 
that's kind of kind of like stares at you intently again like the entire time this is going on richard is trying his hardest to kind of make contact with the specter <laughs> and it's doing nothing like it's just kind of ignoring him at this point and just kind of staring at you with empty hollow sockets of a skull type of if you're dead why are you here jumping upstairs to odell you've kind of managed to make your way upstairs you're making your way over to sophia she is out cold as best you can tell you hear isabella yelling from downstairs you hear kind of the slowly getting winded sounds of richard kind of trying to fight something he's obviously not capable of connecting with what do you do i'm gonna attempt to wake up sophia all right, so you kind of give her a shake or something, or how do you go about doing this? Oh, yeah, no, I'm just going to give her a shake, like, for sure. All right. She kind of, like, drunkenly takes a swing at you and kind of, she, like, lurches to her feet, swaying unsteadily. Her eyes are unfocused and kind of only half open. All right, do I take a hit, or can I avoid getting hit? <laughs> the swing kind of goes wide, and she kind of, like, drunkenly just doesn't make contact and just kind of stumbles towards you. Okay. Is she relatively conscious or still kind of passed out-ish? I would not call this conscious. Moving, but not conscious. Okay. I attempt to uh, shake her again uh, to try to, like, wake her up. So I start shaking her more while yelling out her name. Give me a manipulation. Ow. Four dice, zero successes. I'm just on a bad streak. So she kind of, like, drunkenly lulls her head back and slams it with as much force kind of over your shoulder missing you but kind of like definitely an attempt to injure you but it kind of like sags to one side again as though it's not really under direct control give me a vigilance four dice one success her movements are weird now that you're kind of paying more attention as she kind of tried to hit you it's not the motions of a drunk more the motions of like a puppet specifically a marionette of some kind like it's long elongated swings that have kind of no control over them like it's something almost like flailing the body about in random directions or not random but like it's giving it like a big command of like swing or throw the head or something and it kind of it's not stopping it it's just kind of like going with the motion type of thing but jumping back downstairs to isabella you are yelling at a specter that's ignoring Richard trying to punch it. Richard, you're kind of starting to breathe heavy at this point. It's just everything you're doing isn't making contact. You also hear upstairs kind of like the sounds of a mild scuffle. Did it say anything to the last thing I said? It's just staring at you angrily. I, I mean, I'm assuming we, we've seen weird stuff before, but none of us have experienced anything like Maybe that. Maybe not this weird. Like, this is some top-tier weird type of thing. Like, I guess, like, that's the question. Have any of you seen a ghost before? I need a reminder of what the neck is. The neck is not a ghost. Uh, no. Uh, so I, I mean, I kind of just start the back up towards the, the stair. All right. So I don't, I don't have anything. Well, I, I guess I have like a, a hurricane lantern, and I saw Odell trying to use that to dispel this thing so i'll just like light it up and focus the light over on the specter i mean like it tries to light up like you obviously you crank it full blast kind of thing yeah lantern's glowing with like that same eerie blue light it's barely putting off any light there's no warmth coming off of it i turn it off i don't i don't want to deal with that give me a vigilance uh zero successes on two dice so i will say you're dead and Atia, Hilma, and Albert killed you. How did you die? It's a skull, so it has no face, but it kind of has an energy of smirking at you, and it goes, you were there, Katya. You would know. Well, I don't know because I'm not Katya. So as you say that, the priest from earlier sails out of the darkness of the stairs behind you, kind of like, he was trying to grab you, but he kind of hits the floor and rolls off to the side once, kind of a loud thud. Does the priest have, like, a... Does he have the uh, cross around his neck? Yeah. Can I grab that? Just kind of rip it off his neck? 
Sure. <laughs> Can I like hold it up in the direction of the specter while like stepping away from the priest? Yeah. Now you can totally do that. Richard, I've got good news for you. You're no longer terrified. You regain some control. But you regain control just in time to see the specter float towards Isabella, kind of putting its body over the cross in her hand and just kind of like looming over her, only the way a disembodied kind of specter skeleton and dated clothing can kind of like just leering down at her with a skull face. What do you do? So I'm no longer afraid. Uh, I've been fighting a ghost for the past six actions and whatnot. Yep. And he's just looming over Isabella. Yeah, kind of like almost a show of force of this cross doesn't do shit. And we are currently downstairs, not through the trap door. You're on the second story. You're below the trap door, but not all the way downstairs in the dining room. Gotcha. Oscar, what do you want? What can appease you? I want what every murdered wants. Revenge. What if... What if revenge cannot be given? What if we can only give justice? Revenge isn't something you give, Richard. It's something I take. That is not an option we can allow. I have not been upstairs in the trap door, but it feels like we're being led out and we're being um, kind of... We're being kept from it. So I do want to try to run up the door into the previous or into that room. I want to run up into the attic. Sure. Yeah. You go up there and you see Odell is kind of locked in kind of some light combat with Sophia. You've left Isabella alone downstairs or in, on the second story with the specter. She's tough. She can handle herself. <laughs> Odell, you kind of hear someone come up the ladder behind you. Sophia's kind of like flung herself on you trying to attack you. What do you do? So since I've noticed this kind of marionette puppet type movement, I want to try to snap her out of it. So I'm going to have to escalate what I do to wake her up. So do I by any chance have like, I guess this time period's equivalent of like smelling salts in my medicine bag to try to wake her up sure but also like she's trying to actively attack you you do not have time to leisurely go through your medical bag to try and find something like that okay well she i mean she came at me but she missed so she's not on me currently so i could look through my bag while she's not on me correct i mean do you want to start looking through your bag i want to shuffle through my bag quickly and find that yes all right, give me an investigation to see how kind of rapidly you find this. All right. Uh, three dice, zero successes. Yeah, you're kind of fumbling around in your bag right now. So jumping down to Isabella, this ghost has kind of put itself on the cross. You are desperately brandishing at it. Someone has lunged at you from the stairs behind you. What do you do? There's probably ones in the rooms and stuff like that, but on the main hallway you're at right now, probably not. Okay. Um... I will head downstairs and try to get outside. I mean, the specter's in my way of getting up towards the ladder, right? Yep. Yeah, I guess I'll head downstairs. Run for the door. All right. So as you kind of like bolt down the stairs, the specter does not follow you. And as you get down the stairs, you see all the other patrons are kind of jerkily moving towards the stairs in a slow shuffle. There are multiple people kind of slowly drunkenly kind of disorderly making their way towards you on the stairs what do you do i will break right and kind of like hop over the bar and use that as a barrier to get to the door sure all right jumping back upstairs to richard you are seeing odell rummage through a medical bag as sophia kind of prepares to attack him again i take a quick look in this room this is my first time here what's in this room just storage, boxes, clothing, some bags, nothing jumps out. He was obviously useful. I saw Sophia trying to fight Odell. Yeah. Can I take her down? Like, not like full on, like, kick her or anything else like that, but I do want to try to see if I could just, like, arrest her, I guess. Like a tackle or something? Yeah, like a tackle, like a grabbing tackle. Give me a force. One success out of three die. 
So how do you do this? Like, do you kind of like spear tackler? Do you just kind of like knock her over? What's the move you go for? Richard Steiner with a spear. Honestly, probably that's going to be the best bet. I'm just going to kind of run toward her as I just leap and I grab her uh, as I kind of. Yeah, I, I tackle her, but I do turn my body so that way a full grown man is not like landing on top of a child. But it's like, a hey, I'm grabbing you so that way you can't start swinging. Teenager, but yeah, I get it. Yeah. It's like she still hits the ground hard, though, and it's almost like the air gets sucked out of the room when she kind of hits the ground. Like there's this kind of like a sudden feeling change, and she goes limp back into sleep. And downstairs, Isabella, you see everything else kind of go limp. And Odell, you kind of look up, and the lights are still dim and weird, but it's a little bit less cold. A split second passes, and then just the sky around you erupts in crazy lightning. But aside from the sound of the intensifying storm, there are no other sounds. With all that happening, uh, that confirms my suspicion that she's kind of a, like, I guess she is like an anchor for whatever this is going on, was my theory. Um, So after seeing that she was, like, disoriented and it kind of shifted the atmosphere a bit, I'm going to keep uh, looking for those uh, smelling salts to try to wake her up. Yeah, you find those. You're no longer under pressure. Okay. And so I'm going to run right over to where she's at and administer the smelling salts. They don't do anything. They should do something, but she is like out cold. Okay. After realizing that it did nothing, Richard is upstairs with me right now, correct? Yep. Okay. I look over at Richard and I go, these are smelling salts and nothing happened. Yeah, I can smell it from over here. Goodness gracious. What happened? You, what happened? You came up to check on her. Then now you're fighting? Well, she apparently was the one that was putting on the plays and she wanted to show me the play. Next thing you know, here we are. I can give you the details or we can figure this out. Okay, that's we, we're going to figure this out. Quick question. Are you aware that you kicked Isabella down a down a ladder? I don't remember that. I remember seeing a ghost or whatever that thing is up here. Then I woke up downstairs seeing that thing again, but I was down the floor. It touched my head. And then when it touched my forehead, I don't remember anything between after that and then being downstairs. Okay. So, are you aware of the ghost? Yes, I am aware. All right. Does the name Oscar ring a bell for, for you at any, at any point? Uh, it was on the invitation about the play. Anything else? And it was in the play. That was it. Okay. Can you, what, what happened in the play? Because right now, there is a ghost that's thinking that we, I, I'm somebody named Albert that Isabella is somebody named Katya, and then you have a different name. The ghost is calling you Hilma for some, for some reason, and it wants revenge. So we have, we have a poltergeist, a possession. Do you know anything about possessions, by chance? Do I remember anything about possessions in the play? play doesn't really talk about that. play talked about how there was a, a young hero who got murdered by someone named Albert, maybe. Okay. A lot has happened, so I'm trying to remember exactly all the details of the play. Oh, gosh, no. The only thing I remember is something about this character being murdered by someone named Albert. So give me a learning. Okay. God. Six dice, zero successes. Could always push it. Yeah, I'll push it. All right. That's insane. <laughs> Your luck tonight is incredibly bad. <laughs> I had one really good roll and it's been dog shit said. You still take a mental condition from that. I know. So what you picking up? I'm picking up angry because I'm upset with my rolls and I'm gonna project that in a weird way to my character. But yes, I'm frustrated I can't remember the details because it's all just happening so fast. 
Yeah, you can't pull the exact details of, but you're kind of admittedly kind of addled given all the things that have happened in the last few minutes. Remember, that's a, this is a short timeline and kind of real time for your characters. The play involves someone named Oscar who got murdered. There was something about Albert being the murderer or something. He got invited to some inn and something about kind of how he was not, like his death was not handled well or not treated well. God, there was just, there was something about this guy being murdered by someone named Albert and it's just, death was not well and it just, oh, I wish I could remember. And I just, I, I obviously visibly frustrated by the fact that I can't remember all the details. And so there's just a visible look of frustration on my face right now. So Richard, you're a learned man, correct? That is correct. Give me a learning. Uh, Three successes out of five die. You are aware that it is typical kind of in Scandinavian funeral rites, like more traditional ones, where you're buried is important. Like consecrated ground, properly prepared graves. Those are important. It's important to show respect to the dead. And if ghosts are real, maybe there's some truth to that as well. Maybe you're grasping at straws, but kind of everything you know from just kind of living in this world, that is a thing you probably would kind of be able to guess at, given what Odell is kind of going on about. Oh, God. Oscar's still here. Oscar is haunting the inn because his body is probably still buried here. If he was heading towards this place and was murdered, if he's still angry, he was not sent off properly. Where the hell will we find the body? As you may recall, Sammy wrote about how his former wife, Nora, had a weird fascination with the occult. And it was really annoying him. Oh, my God. I flip open the journal and I look to see if there's any entries about, like, anything pertaining to Oscar's body or anything pertaining to Sammy's wife's activities. Nothing about a body or anything like that, but numerous mentions about how Nora was insisting there was a ghost somewhere in the inn and how they had to deal with it type of thing. Like she she was trying to conduct her own occult investigation before she left. Like they fought about it a lot. Hmm. Can I go to Nora's room? Absolutely. Phenomenal. I would like to go to Nora's room and investigate and see if there's anything there. All right. So you two go back down the trap door to the second story. Yeah, I'm going to follow. I'm still carrying Sophia. Okay. So jumping downstairs to Isabella, you are down there in a room full of people that are kind of like fallen to the ground where they were standing. You do hear your compatriots upstairs kind of moving towards the trap door again. What do you do? I think that I'm freaked out. I'm really beat up. I'm not frightened, but I'm angry. So I'm going to head outside and just like stand in the rain for like a minute or two, like pacing and yeah. looking at the various like outbuildings, kind of looking for a, a nice place to kind of hide away for a little bit. Yeah. Makes sense. Yeah. Maybe go to the stables or something just to catch up. I don't think it'll be the stables because she does not like the smell of horse. Sure. I want to find, like, a quiet place. I mean, the dining room's pretty quiet. I don't want to be in there. That's creepy. <laughs> Specifically, I'm I'm trying to find a quiet place for a somewhat mechanical reason, but also, like, a, a role-play thing. So I'm gonna I just... mean, there's a bedroom off the dining room that no one appears to be in. Kind of seems to be the staff quarters. Yeah, you could also duck into the kitchen, which, as best you can tell, no one's in. I don't know if uh, Isabel is currently comfortable in the inn itself. Is the cellar unlocked? You haven't been to the cellar yet. Yeah, I'll walk over and see if the the door is unlocked. All right, so you exit the inn and go to the cellar, correct? Yes. So while Isabel is kind of making her way across the yard to to the cellar to kind of catch some rest, Odell, Richard, you are rifling through Nora's room? I mean, yeah, I'm following Richard's lead at this point. All right. So you're going through Nora's room at this point? Yes. All right. So Nora's room is more or less left exactly 
as she left it. There's a bed, a chair, and on her desk is a journal. Flipping through that, you find some relevant ones that apply to maybe the situation specifically. January 15th. I saw it again last night as I was on my way to empty the widower wrecker's chamber pot. The candle in my hand went out and, standing still in the dark corridor on the second floor, I could hear the floorboards move. Someone was walking toward me. I whispered my husband's name, and an unknown voice responded with a word I couldn't understand. The hairs on my arms stood up and the blood throbbed in my veins. Finally, I dropped the pot and ran downstairs. My footsteps woke several of the guests. I had to spend more than an hour on my knees scrubbing the stench of Rutgers excrement off the floorboards. Sammy was angry. I didn't tell him I'd seen a ghost, it would be adding fuel to the fire. January 17th. Do I really have myself to blame? I know what I did to Sammy, but that was almost 20 years ago. He gets so different when he's angry, and I go mute with fear whilst he demands answers. Perhaps I should know better than to upset him? But all I did was suggest that the sudden falling apart of the inn might have occult causes. I definitely shouldn't have mentioned the ghost. Now I won't be able to show myself to the guests for a week, the bruises around my neck can be concealed with a collar, and no one can see the pain in my chest and stomach. But my left eye is purple like a plum and my nose is swollen. I fear for Sophia. She is so much like me, and I'd like to tell her everything, but I'm afraid of what Sammy would say. He wants to eradicate all things artistic and sublime from his daughter's body, that which came from me. January 31st I mentioned my nightmares to Sophia, and it turned out she's been having the same dreams. A man being killed, the murderer sneaking up behind him and cutting his throat with a knife. The body is buried in unconsecrated ground, and suddenly it is my body in the grave. I've been buried alive and can't get out. All I want is revenge, or peace in death. I wake with a scream. February 7th. The fourth time I saw him I understood what he was whispering, it's not a word, but a name, Pyrie. After spending several days pondering the matter, to Sammy's great annoyance, I remembered where I'd heard that name. Sammy's grandfather, who used to run this inn, was named Pyrie Harjula. There are lots of old letters in the attic. Among them I found a stack of messages all signed with Pyrie's name, written in code and addressed to someone in Uppsala. The code was easily deciphered, and now I've shut myself away in my room all morning, reading Pyrie's love letters. Sammy is furious that I've neglected my duties. He is banging the kitchen walls and throwing saucepans against the floor. Poor Ingalai. February 8th. I now know who the dead man is. Pyrie writes of his guilt and feelings of remorse over a murder he committed. He killed a man named Oscar Jort by slitting his throat. This happened during a meeting with three people from Uppsala. One of them was named Albert. Oscar was unwilling to cooperate, but what he was meant to do I am unsure of. They buried his body somewhere in our garden. Pyrie says that, instead of having a priest consecrate the ground, they desecrated his body with magic. He fears that he has damned the inn and condemned himself to hell. March 1st. Sophia has been quiet and withdrawn for some time now. I sat down to talk with her, and she told me that she dreams of setting up a theater. She wants to put on shows here at the Witch Cat. I think it's a brilliant idea. I have sent an invitation to the Troll Dreams Theater Troupe, mostly to attract customers but also to inspire Sophia. They will pass through here in early April. This time, I won't let Sammy get his way. March 19th Sammy saw the letter from the theater director, and as I'm writing this, I have hid in the stable like a naughty child. He hit me with the fireplace poker, everything went black and I woke up on the floor. I lost the feeling in the fingers of my left hand, and they are still numb. 
Blood, saliva, snot and tears are running down my face, so I need to keep this paper away from my body to avoid staining it. I'm so scared. April 3rd. If I stay here he'll kill me. Tonight I'm packing my things, and I'm taking Pyrie's letters with me. I'll show them to Sophia when I come for her. Perhaps we will return to the witch cat one day, when Sammy has died or come to his senses. Then we can go looking for ghosts together. Oh, shit. Okay. Well, that's crazy. Odell? Mm-hmm? Richard, give me a learning. One success out of five. <laughs> five dice, zero successes. Richard, it occurs to you that a root cellar if you were going to bury a body already below ground. We need to get to the root cellar. What do you mean? What'd you find? Sammy's grandfather, Piri Hardula, is the one who killed Oscar. He slit his throat, and instead of giving him a proper burial, they threw him somewhere within this garden and desecrated his body with magic. I have a firm belief that the body is still here, and I'm going to imagine that if there is a root cellar, on these grounds, that would be the perfect place to hide a body. It's already underground. There's not really much digging that you have to do. But just from my intuition and just from what I can just piece together, if we can give the bones a proper send-off, we might be able to lift the, the curse that the witch cat is currently experiencing. Sounds like a plan to me. Shall we? Yes. I'm hesitant to take Sophia, but at the same time, I don't want her to try to kill anybody. I've sedated Sammy. He's currently in his room. I think if we lock Sammy in his room, and if we can lock Sophia in this room, put a chair up against the door handle or something so that way she can't get out and hurt herself. No, because Sammy just tried to hang himself, actually. This is a bit of a conundrum. What do we do with the child? Both of you give me a vigilance. That is a one success on the vigilance. Three dice, zero successes. So, out of the window of Nora's room, you see Isabella making her way from the back of the inn towards the root cellar behind the inn. And you see her kind of reach for the door and start to open it. And with that, we're going to jump to Isabella. You two are observing all of this as this is going on. So, Isabella, you found the cellar. You're opening the door. What's going through your head right now? They kind of see that, like, she's, like, stomping over and does, like, a spin looking around, exacerbated. And she, like, runs her hands through her hair and pulls at it and then opens the cellar door. Do you want to pull the door open? Yeah. So as the door swings open, a blast of just storm winds comes hurtling out of the cellar at you. It doesn't make normal wind sounds, though. It makes the sounds of just a blood-curdling scream. The sound of a man's throat being slit. I'm going to close the door. Give me a fear. Do fear checks get uh, affected by conditions? Oh, yeah. One success. You still close the door? I think it's a reaction out of, like, you know, when you're startled, kind of slam shut. Yeah, makes sense. Yeah, so kind of the door slams shut, the sound stops, but like maybe it echoes off the inn or something like that. But again, you're kind of back to normal night sounds at this point. I was going to try to find a a quiet place to do this. Instead of going inside, I'm going to find like a tree, one of these thick trees that has a decent overhang that can give me some cover from the rain if that exists. Makes sense. You're going to sit there and try to kind of recuperate some? Well, specifically, I'm going to use my memento to take out my book. And it's got Isabel thinking about the, her friend, we'll say, reading it to her. And she, like, cracks it open and she can't read it. But she tries to read a couple of the words. And she's going to spend, like, a few minutes, like, parsing through it to kind of, like, settle her mind and, like, get her head out of her, her mind off of the pain she's feeling. Uh, and as she's like reading it, she's, you know, she doesn't feel the injuries she has, but if it's okay, Charlie, 
condition I want to get rid of is wounded or bad, uh, and just kind of have it be like uh, that moment of I gotta get back home to the people I need to protect, and yeah. like a, an adrenaline rush that uh, battered makes sense. Yeah, you're kind of like it's like okay, I'm still hurt, but like you're mentally dealing with it for lack of a better phrase. Yeah, uh, and then she'll like slip the book away, taking like a deep breath, wring out her hair. And start back. Have you gone downstairs to meet Isabella outside by now, Odell and Richard? Or are you kind of still up in Nora's room? You saw all of that kind of go down. I would have started running downstairs immediately. Yeah, same. Yeah, so you all kind of arrive at the cellar at roughly the same time. Maybe you're waiting there for a couple of minutes to wait for Isabella to rejoin you. But yeah, you're all now at the cellar door. I don't know why you guys are here, but I opened the cellar door and there was a scream that came out of it. It's because there's a body hidden. Fantastic. Yeah, it's a body that's been desecrated with magic. Okay, how do we fix that? Well, we can we can consecrate the area. Oh, do any of you know how to do that? Typically, that's something that a priest can do, or typically does. Does anyone here have any kind of religious background? There's a priest inside. I think we saw a church on the way in. Maybe we can go bury him there. Are you fine with carrying a body all the way over there? It wouldn't be the... Um... I have Sophia. I, do, I did not know what to do with her. It would, what, where to put her or anything else like that. I figured tying her to a chair would probably not be a good idea, considering the self-harm that nearly befell Sammy. Maybe we just want to leave her inside. And do this as soon as possible. Yeah, I think the issue with Sophia is her getting her, I mean, getting conscious again, because whatever, when she got knocked out or whatever, it seemed to affect everything else that was going on. So she's some sort of conduit. So as long as she's knocked out for now, we should be okay-ish. Oh, as long as she's knocked out. Yeah. I pull up my flask and give it a shake. Okay. But that has a time duration, so if we're going to move, we should do it now. But also, my concern about you, are you okay with it? Isn't necessarily on the weight of the body, but rather are you comfortable with remains? I don't know. Can can this be like a... a, Is there like an insight role, Charlie? What are you trying to do? I mean, Isabella is trying to act like she, you know, is kind of hesitant on saying yes. She, it's an act because she has dealt with remains before. So, e manipulation. One success. Do you other two have any reason to doubt your compatriot? I don't, but I'm not even going to bother to roll because I can already tell you it's going to be a zero based on my rolling streak tonight well the funny thing is is this roll doesn't matter so you would probably get like all successes yeah i don't have any particular reason to doubt and so i will just take isabella at her word i would imagine taking isabella at her word she's young teenager who doesn't want to touch uh dead remains here how about you take sophia and i can go collect the remains i'm i'm a physician this is nothing new What's your physique and your force? How buff are you? Excuse me. I am a spry gentleman, and I do my cal- I do my aerobics. It's just bones. I would imagine it's just bones. That's a fair point. I was more asking, like, out of character, what's your, like, build? Oh, I'm fucking... I'm, it's like a three. I'm just a guy. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I can... I, yeah, I guess I could hold on to her if you really want me to. Yeah, she. Here's the thing: she was floating, I think, and trying to fight Odell. So it's probably best that you do take care of it. I'd highly doubt that this thing is going to spring back to life and try to attack me. But nonetheless, I'm going to go collect the remains here. Hold on to this, and I pass over Sophia's limp body. Okay. Okay. This is a little take Sophia. All right, so are you staying outside, Isabella, or are you going in with the other two? I'm going to come in, just in case there's... We we can leave Sophia outside for a moment while we go find these remains, I think. 
In the rain? I'll leave her, like, inside on the stairs. So she's not in the rain. Sure. Yeah, so you do that, and you now reopen the cellar? Yeah. All right, so again, that same kind of blast of storm mixed with scream comes passing out at you. Isabel, you're prepared for it. Odell, Richard, give me fear. So again, you're logicking or you're empathying away, uh, kind of your way through this. I'm going to try to logic again. Logic, maybe. That's a one success. Sorry. Two dice, zero successes. All right. So we're going to take one mental condition and you are once again terrified. I'm going to encourage you to just kind of become meek and kind of like shut down a little bit at this point. Okay. You're still capable of tagging along. I can choose between hopeless and broken. And I think broken sounds like the description nope. you want me to go with here. Nope. Oh. Broken is when all the other ones are filled up. So you are hopeless. Uh, I am hopeless. So you kind of, what's the right phrase? Depressingly follow the other two in. You're not broken yet, though. You're just at the very cusp of it. As you all step into what should be the root cellar, the room is big far bigger than the kind of outline from the outside made it seem. And the walls that should contain food and supplies are covered in vermin and maggots and insects just kind of crawling all over it. There's a whisper about the room as Oscar's voice kind of trails in and out on the kind of slowly swirling storm wind sounds. Stuff like Albert, my love, you were everything to me. Hilma, Katya, my name was... They danced in Paris, just like disjointed thoughts. And as you kind of make your way into the space, you see floating in the center of the room a figure similar to the specter you've seen, but this one appears to be an alive man dressed in the same apparel as the specter you were doing combat with, but with skin and flesh and looking very much alive. It floats kind of above the ground until its neck just explodes and kind of outlined a kind of like a dark shower of something shoots off into the distance. And Oscar kind of looks at you with fear in his eyes, but kind of looks past you. It's not clear who he's looking at. Kind of, there's a variety of gurgling sounds and just kind of as he slowly falls to the ground and then suddenly his body is covered in maggots and just dissolves away into bone. What do you do? Well, I take out my flask and I'm just going to, see how much of anything I can get from there and just take a little swig. Because that was a lot. Are the bones still there? No. Look for a spot that's uneven. The specter did land in a specific spot. That's true. Is there a shovel in here? There's a shovel. Yeah, it's a, it's a root cellar. There's probably a shovel down here you could use. I'm going to go start digging. Yes, yeah, so this takes some time and you hear the storm outside get worse, but eventually a skull leers back from the dirt at you. And kind of as you start to brush the dirt away to expose more of it, you hear a loud, ominous crack of thunder and you feel more than you see something enter the room with you, floating above your heads once more. Stay away from that, Katya. It's time to put you the rest, Oscar, properly this time. Give me manipulation. One success. So the specter kind of looks past you down at the skull. And again, there's no face on this, but you can almost see like the bone kind of shift. It's no longer angry. It now seems to have like almost confused quality to it. It kind of it points down at the skull, kind of leering back at it out of the dirt. If I'm there, then I must be... No. No, no, no. What trickery is this, Katya? What have you done to me? All I know is that you have died, and you have been laid to rest in an unholy place, and that must be rectified. Spectre kind of whirls to look at Richard. Albert! Explain this to me. No, you're, you're not Albert. My name is Richard. I am Dr. Richard Steiner. I'm here to exhume you from this land and place you somewhere where you may pass. What has been done to you is unforgivable. But 
Whether or not you do forgive, we must move on. Hilma. Hilma was with you. Hilma cannot be. Where is Hilma? I'm, I'm right here. You're not Hilma. This all happened a long time ago. Those you speak of are long dead. The specter kind of slowly floats to the ground and kind of seems to put weight on the ground like it's standing there. It seems to be kind of, you'd guess, kind of maybe losing some of its specterness, like it's trying to abide by human rules all of a sudden. It kind of, again, it's a skull. It doesn't have a face to be confused with, but it definitely seems to kind of adopt a more confused posture and kind of stares at its own body and kind of pauses for a second and then kind of vanishes away. I'm going to get back to work very quickly. Yeah. Uh, is there another shovel I can like help with? Yeah. Okay, so I'm just going to help. Yeah, so it takes some time. You eventually manage to unearth the remains and pull them out of the ground. Do you head off for the church? Oh, yeah. We're huffing it. At least that's... Unless there's any objections, I think huffing it is a great idea, the best idea. Yeah. Let's get going. So you head off towards the church you saw and the weather is still terrible, but it definitely is less bad than it was when you first arrived at the inn. It's still raining at you. It's still hailing at you. The wind is still horrible, but like, it's not as angry as it used to be. It's just kind of weather at this point. Give me a vigilance as you're kind of walking towards the church. I have that lantern. I light it up to give a bonus. Sure. And also, I don't know if this matters, but I also have opera glasses that let me use vigilance at a distance. Yeah, those would help in this case. I'm going to just go ahead and roll my zero now, as expected. Two dice, zero successes. One success. Four dice, zero successes. Who's carrying Oscar's remains? I am. Makes sense, Richard. You're a tad distracted. Isabella, you notice that the specter is following you but at a distance kind of like almost like a dog of some kind but it's also kind of being secretive about it like it keeps peeking out from behind trees like it's nervous almost what you're doing but it's maintaining a respectful distance I'm like really sad for this guy all of a sudden hmm. I just keep an eye on him take some time to get there it's not a quick walk by any measure but hey, you eventually arrive at the church there's a small fence kind of keeping people out but it's easy enough to bypass, and there's a shovel there if you want to kind of dig into the ground to put the bones in. I will do so. Yeah, that takes a little bit of time again. You put some dirt over it just as the sun is rising, kind of at the edges of the fence, that fence in the cemetery of the church. You see a young man dressed in outdated formal clothing kind of staring at you, and as he kind of fades away, he waves goodbye and just is gone as the sun breaks over the tree line and morning has come. On behalf of all of us at Negative Modifier, thank you for listening and we do hope you enjoyed this episode. If you are not already a subscriber, please consider becoming one, partially so you do not miss our next episode, but mostly because it helps new listeners find us. In addition to that, if you like the episode, please consider clicking the thumbs up button below. If you'd like to further support the show, please consider joining us on Discord or becoming a Patreon patron.